Josh, you guys had this, you know, five-game winning streak to end the season. You, you finish number one seed in, in the West. What's the kind of mindset and message been like this week coming off of that uh, as you prepare for what's next? Yeah, I mean, obviously, you know, to, to finish one in the West is, is a great achievement in itself, and uh, we kind of spoke about that, acknowledged it, and, um, you know, but that's done now, I guess. You know, that it's, a, it's kind of a whole new season now with the playoffs, and um, obviously we don't know who we're playing yet, but the last two days have been great the way we've prepared. We've got after to practice, um, you know, long, probably the longer ones we've had for a while now, so um, it's been good to just keep, you know, conditioning up, uh, keep our feel up for the game, and um, obviously we'll all be watching the game tomorrow night, see who wins, but, um, you know, tomorrow will be a lighter day, and then we'll come in Saturday and prepare for whoever we get. You guys have really been consistent on your messaging and just you know your mindset from the first year you got here through to now is there a level of satisfaction and you know you you get to this point your number one seed and, and you kind of are still talking about the same things that you were talking about a couple years ago definitely I mean you know this time two years ago I was on a plane back to Australia you know that's a season was kind of ended like that and and I'd known for a while you know that's kind of where we we're at as a team and um and you fast forward to where we're at now and it's you know the growth that we've made and you know, I think the, the most important thing is nobody, we never skip steps in the process from top to bottom of this organization. We, we all kind of bought into what we we're doing here and, um, you know, did it the right way, took the right steps to get there. And um, there were days where we'd come in here and we'd, we'd lose by 50 points the, next, the, last, the night before. And um, the environment that we, that we got to come back into at work every day was, was unbelievable. And um, you, you would not be able to tell that, um, that we lost the night before or anything. And, um, yeah, I mean, the, the, the environment that we, that we get to work in every day is great, and that's what makes um, being a part of this team so fun. And, um, and I think that's, that's really kind of fast track, you know, where, where we've got to today. Coach had mentioned that the first practice back was kind of like a first day of school kind of energy. Everyone was really excited to see each other. What's been the energy like at practice these last couple of days? It's been great. I mean, we, we had a really busy end to the season, so we didn't get to practice, you know, hard a lot. Um, and, and these last two days have been good to get up and down, um, get a good sweat in. And um, the energy was great. I mean, it's kind of exactly what, what Coach said with the first day of school, you know, kind of vibe. And um, yeah, it, it was great. I mean, as I said, we haven't had one of these practices or two of these practices for a long time. And um, it was important just to keep, you know, sharpening what we're doing, conditioning was good and um, we got to get off for a little bit so um, it's great the energy was great and I think everyone's excited heading into Sunday. Does it help the fact either one Sacramento or New Orleans you played them recently like within the last 10 days two weeks uh, from a prep standpoint does that help you with the workouts this week? I mean, yeah, I mean, it does. Uh, we, we've tried not to think about too much who we're playing against. Obviously, we still don't know, so it's, it's hard to guess. And, uh, but, you know, obviously playing the West Conference team four times in a year, um, you get a good feel for them after a while, you know, after the first game, two games. And um, we've played both these teams four times now. So, um, yeah, we understand, obviously, both their strengths, weaknesses, and things we, we will attack. But, I mean, we still don't know who we're playing, so we'll address that on Saturday. I, I imagine you're enough of a fan of a game to maybe, I don't know, like actually watch – these games this week, like how are you digesting these games as you watch them? Yeah, I mean it's fun to watch. I mean, you know, you can kind of tell the excitement levels around the around the basketball industry and, and the plays and the games and the crowds and how loud they are. You know, the playoffs are just another level, and it's still the playing games, but you get that same feel. And um, even just watching it through a TV screen, you, you can kind of feel that energy. And um, I guess it's a, it's better we don't have to play in these games, those games this year, and uh, we can get straight to the real deal on, on Sunday. But um, watching it as a fan of the game, you know, I think we're all fans. We all we all watch it. Um, we, we all love to watch playoff hoops, and um, you know the last two nights or how many nights of games have been were great, and you know the next two games will will be good as well. In in, in New York, you were pretty introspective just about you know, remembering the, the low points of the time you've been here. You know, being on the other side of you know being sixty piece or whatever, you know seventy piece, just. Now that you've clinched the, the the youngest number one seed ever, like what does that mean? Being that kind of inter intersection of like youth and, and success. I mean, it's great. I mean, I think it helps, you know, having guys that go through the tough days together. And we, we've had a lot of guys here that were um, a part of this team when we were, you know, at the end of losses like that, and um, and we'd gone, you know, big losing streaks, but. As I said, we, we created an environment where when we'd come into work the next day, you would not be able to tell we just lost, you know, eight, nine, ten in a row. Um, the environment was so positive. It was uh, energy was always high. Guys always came in ready to work, get better. And um, I think that's, you know, what, kind of where we are now. You give a lot of credit to that. Um, and, and obviously, you know, I think a, a lot's changed in 18 months. You know, we've got different players uh, coming. Guys have gotten better, improved. Um, so we've all got familiar with each other over the last, you know, two, three years, how long guys have been here. And I think... Um, you know, it's really kind of impressive looking back from today to where we were, you know, two years ago even. Um, even 12 months ago, we were in the play and we were the 10th seed. And um, to, to, to get to where we are now, uh, really impressive. And 
Um, but as I said, you know, it's kind of a new season now. Uh, we were the one seed uh, a few days ago. We still are, but, um, you know, those 57 wins or how many wins we had don't matter anymore. You know, we, we come into a brand new game and um, on Sunday we'll be ready to we'll be ready to go. And the way you approach this thing, just the way you talk, you, I mean, you can hear hints of like Mark's words, like just in the way you kind of approach and talk about this thing. Uh, and you've only been here so long. I just wonder, like, how long does it take being here before, you know, you start to see some of that influence in the way you just see or approach the game maybe with like like a guy like Chet who's been here since last year he enforces those cases only been here a year like how long does that take oh I mean not long at all it's very quick um coaches and and you know you get a feel for when you walk in the building what what the team's about what this organization's about and um and and you know Sam only brings people in they're gonna they're gonna meet those expectations and uh we're, we're lucky we've got a great group of guys uh coaches have been awesome um everyone's on the same page and bought into what we're doing here and um, and it's been the same for guys that come through the doors, rookie, second year, third year, everyone's on the same page and uh, we all have the same goal and uh, we prioritize winning, you know, above everything else. And um, that's how it's got to be with a good, and, and for a young team to have that, you know, it's, it's easy to get ambitious on your own and you're a young guy, you want to prove yourself in the league. You know, everyone's got individual accolades they want to get and, and things like that. But um, for this group to prioritize winning above everything else, is, I think is a big part of where we're at today. And um, it's a big part of, you know, what's going to help us go forward. What's this week been like? You guys don't, typically get this much time off unless it's the off season. So this is just watching and waiting to see who you're going to play. Yeah, I mean, it's different, you know, to have, so it'll be seven days or six, seven days, whatever it is, before we play our next game. Um, it's a long break, and obviously with the playing, that's kind of changed the way things are. And uh, but it's good. I mean, it's nice to get a little bit of time off, but it's also you, you know, biting to get back out there. So um, obviously, having these two practices has been great, just to keep up, you know, game conditioning, things like that, stay sharp, and um, and also, you know, as fans of the game, we get to watch, you know, great games um, for these nights. So um, you know, it is good. It has its perks, but it's also, you know, you're not playing a game for seven days. So um, that part of it, I don't really like. You know, I'd, I'd love to play as much as possible, but um, obviously, that's. A, you know what happens coming with the one seed and um, we get a little bit extra time off time to rest recover get guys healthy and um, get into it on Sunday now you don't have anything to compare it to but do you feel like it's a little bit of a positive a positive thing to just relax a little bit before the playoffs start I mean definitely I mean 82 games is a long long year and and you know the biggest break I mean, you get all-star break but outside of that you know you get two if you get a three-day break throughout the year um, that's a big break so uh, to have six seven days of um, where we can recover, getting great practices, where we get, you know, stay in game shape. Um, it's really good and it's, it's different. Obviously, we haven't done it all year, but um, I think the energy that we've had, the way guys have approached it um, has been great. And I think it's going to put us in good stead, you know, to, to hit the ground running uh, when we play game one. Josh, throughout town and downtown especially, playoff banners are being put up to kind of build excitement. Have you noticed any of that as you drive around? I have. Yeah, I have noticed it um, in the hotels as well in the Omni. Uh, I've seen all the signs and it looks great. And I know how excited we are and I know how excited the fans are. So. Um, I think everyone's you know ready to get to Sunday and, and get game one underway. Josh, you're now two years deep into working with Chet, uh, uh, not Chet, Chip, working on your form, sort of like um, repairing, just adjusting. How comfortable do you feel? Is it natural at this point? And do you ever catch yourself sort of like falling back to old habits of how you used to shoot? Yeah, all the time. I think, um, and I, I think that happens more when you know you're missing shots. You start to um, you know revert back to old habits. Um, maybe you don't trust the new stuff as much, and but I've tried to stick with as best I can. Obviously, um, I've been with him pretty much every day for the last, you know, 18 months, and um, he's been great in that area for me. But um, yeah, I mean, you know, breaking a habit, you know, it can't happen overnight. It takes a lot of time, and it's going to take years to to get everything the way I want it to. And um, as, as long as I keep, you know, trying to improve that bit, you know, bit by bit every day, um, hopefully, it can keep pushing me in the right direction. Josh, are you practicing long? Well? Say that again. Love, can you do it? Oh my gosh. No, love's the, the one pass I'm not great yeah, at. Um, can you explain, like, a, what is the difference? You're good with the, like, a bounce pass and yeah. stuff. What's the difference, like, a throwing the ball up and then bounce pass? Um, it, it's got to be pretty pinpoint. I mean, a bounce pass, you can kind of throw it within a general vicinity and guys will be able to get it. But a love, you know, a lot of timing, coordination comes into it. Um, it's a two man thing. Um, I don't know. I think my first, you know, year two years i didn't really have anyone to throw lobs to i mean chet's obviously you know a love threat now but um jay will thinks he's a love threat he's not really um chet is a real love threat but i just I, i've got to really work on throwing him and I, i've tried to throw a few to dub i throw it out of bounds so um i've got to work on it but um you know the more we play together that that connection will keep getting better are you surprised your inbounds plays keep working you guys keep burning people Yes and no. I mean, coach is really, really good at drawing, you know, plays up to get his looks. But um, obviously, teams scout it now, and especially with sideline out of bounds, they start dropping their bigs to the to the basket. So, 
Um, I mean, it's the same with any play. Um, side of bounds team, no, we, we, we try to score on it, and um, they've obviously looked at it. But even baseline, we still try and get looks. Um, we've got good cutters. Guys know where the ball's going to get uh, thrown to, so uh, we'll, keep, we'll keep getting looks on them. It keep working, though. That's just it. it I mean, yeah, team, team scout it. I mean, but there's different looks, not just the first cutter. You know, we've got a bunch of different guys moving, so there's different options out of it. Josh, do you have a like? Do you remember your your first interaction with with Mark Autos? Yeah, years ago. I mean, my first workout it was in um, like Orange County, and and I actually didn't know he, he took the workout. But I didn't know he was the head coach at the time, and he he ran the workout. And I remember getting in the car, and um, my agent told me I, I had no idea, and he he took the workout. Um, there was Wilkes. Cam Woods was there, um, Sam, Rob Hennigan, Will Dawkins. So um, they all were there. And um, that was probably the most nervous I've ever been during a workout. Um, it was just me with about eight, you know, Thunder people in the building. And um, the workout went great. But, um, yeah, that was the first time I ever met any of them and um, caught up with them. What, what was your impression of him? Man? Loved him. I mean, he, for, from the get-go, um, you know, uh, he, he was great. I mean, he was intense in the workout. Obviously, he, he'd never worked me out. I'd never been in a workout with him. So uh, we'll kind of get a feel for each other. But... Um, it was great. Um, I, I loved all the coaches. They encouraged me. And, and I still always talk about that workout. Um, you know, I did two workouts. One was with OKC, one was with another team. And um, the OKC one, it, it was just, you know, something kind of gave me energy. When I saw Sam, Rob, well, these guys walking around clapping, you know, encouraging me, cheering me on, that, that was like, for me, that was the point I wanted to be here. Uh, when I saw the, the GM, Sam, you know, encouraging me during a workout, clapping for me, you know, walking around. Um, and it felt more like... Um, you know, a fun environment to be in opposed to, you know, like an exam where they're sitting there, you know, like, you know, watching me. So um, from that point on, I, I wanted to be here. I've, I, I've, I've only got great things to say about this organization. And uh, from that was kind of the day that I realized that this was, um, you know, the place I wanted to be. You, you say Mark was intense. How so? Uh, just the workout. I mean, from the first five minutes, I was gassed. I could barely breathe. And, um, you know, I was guarding back cuts. I was guarding guys coming off pin downs. And um, I think they wanted to test me and see how I would go with it. And um, I, I tried to put on a brave face as much as I could. But um, the workout was tough. But, um, you know, I just did what I could, did my best, and um, things panned out the right way. Lou, you guys have this, you know, five-game win streak, kind of a, a flurry at the end to, to get the number one seed in the West. What was... Uh, sort of maybe the message or the mindset uh, as you came off of that game 82 and you're heading into this week to prepare for the playoffs? I mean, the mindset was more run through the finish line, just finish the season, finish the season right, and wish we, wish we did. And then we didn't really pay attention to the standing and stuff like that. Our main thing was just to, to work on that stuff and, and, and to finish the season right, which we did. You guys have really had a lot of pride in sort of the messaging that you've had since 2020 being the same as it is now. Is there has there been a little, I guess, uh, satisfaction in approaching this now that you're the one seed, the same way that you you guys approach things four years ago? Yeah, I mean, it's, yeah, there's more happiness definitely. Just the, the way that we ended the season compared to, to a couple years ago. A couple years ago it was a little tough, rough. You know, we had our our situations, but now it's a it's a different story. So, you know, we're just happy to be in this position now, and we look forward to to, to what's coming next. I mean, we. We're getting ready for some tough games, and then, you know, we look forward to it. Blue, as someone who started their career with the Blue, spent a lot of time in the G League, what was your reaction to seeing them win the finals this year? Oh, it was great. I was real happy. I was watching the whole game. Uh, you know, it's, it's, not, it's, not, it's not easy playing in, um, in the G League and, and, and the Blue. So, you know, all the traveling and the stuff they, they went through, you know, just to get the, the championship, was, it was you. So, you know, they came in yesterday after practice. We got to... To hang out, hang with them a little bit, talk about how, how it was, and and then win a championship. We're just so happy for them. What's it like seeing a guy like Ooze, who spent so much time with the Blue this season, and like see him have some success this year? Yeah, well? no, it's great. I mean, Ooze is this is my brother, and then you know I was real happy for him, especially when he got the MVP. And then you know every time he goes to the Blue and he comes back, you know he always getting better and getting more confident. And wish we want him to be like that, and you know now he's back with us, and then he's ready for what's coming next. Not that he's old now. I mean, he's he's not even 21 yet, but. When he showed up, he was like 19-year-old baby-faced kid. I mean, what do you see as maybe some differences in him and some seasoning that he's gotten to himself? English getting better. That's <laughs> number one. But nah, he's just you no know, more comfortable. I mean, it's not easy to come to to America. You know, coming from another country, then it's a different style of play and all that, and you got to adjust to that. So you know, he's he's getting better every day. When you hear that this team is the youngest number one seed ever, knowing that you've been here from the beginning. Having seen those couple of down years, like, what does that mean to you, knowing that, that this team kind of represents that combination of youth and success now? Yeah, I mean, it's just 
it just showed the, the improvement and then now we got better from a couple of years ago. I mean, we've been the youngest team in the league for a long time now and then it just shows that we really stick together and we, we work to, to get to this point now. So, um, I mean, I really don't, I really don't think age matters in that. It's just, you know, let, let your game talk. And then, you know, we've been doing that all season. So we're getting ready to approach a, a different season, I, I would say. And then, you know, it's just going to be a, some tough game, but we're ready for it. But you're one of the few people on this team with playoff experience. Everybody talks about age or experience. Like how much does, does IQ become like a separator from playoff series? A lot. I mean, you know, all, all the games come down come down to to the wire. You know, a couple positions, and um, you know, it's got to be big to execute in those type of moments, especially when the crowd's getting involved and all that. So, I would say that that would be the, the main thing. You know, it's, it's, it's the playoffs. It's, it's more physical, and then you know, it gets loud in the arena. So you got to be locked in the whole game. Well, the last time you played in the playoffs, there, there was no problem. So, like, what, what, what was the difference then in terms of what you had to use as separators when there wasn't a crowd to lean on? Like, yeah, it was different, but um, I mean, the pressure was still there, you know, knowing that you had to win or go home, whatever. So it's on that side, it's, it's still there. You know, you still got to execute. You know, it's, it's, it wasn't as loud, but but still, you know, the, the pressure still there. Was still there. I know it was the bubble, which is a rookie, but going from just end of the regular season or whatever, but the bubble was uh, back in the end of it, going straight to the playoffs to now basically having a week off. Does that preparation change a little bit? Yeah, it does change. But I mean, my first year in the bubble, I was a rookie, clueless of everything. I was just ready to, to go out there and compete. And I didn't really pay attention to none of those, those stuff like that. But like now having a couple of days off to, to to get ready and, you know, and rest a little bit, it's, it, it's, it's helpful then definitely. So, you know, we're just looking forward to, to, to play in that. Do you feel like as one of the guys that has playoff experience, you have to kind of leave the guys that don't have played playoff experience and like kind of tell them what is like? Well, I mean, I would say leave, but at the same time, it's good for all of us to just watch the game that's going on right now. It's the physicality of the way it's being that the game is, is being played right now, you know, it's, you know, guys are, are, are trying to win or they're going home right now. So just the fact that everybody here can, can be able to have a couple of days off, especially watch some of the uh, games right now, it's, it's, it's huge and it's going to help us getting ready for them. Lou, I think two of your most memorable games, obviously that game seven in the bubble and then uh, the playing game last year in New Orleans. We, we've asked you about this a lot, but what is it about those elimination type settings, pressurized settings that you really have thrived for? Uh, honestly, I'm just, I'm just playing a game. I'm, I'm just letting the game come to me. You know, those, those two games that you mentioned, the ball just, just found me, and I was ready to, to make, it, ready to make a play. So, you know, I'll always be ready for that uh, if the ball find, if the, the ball find me. But um, at the end of the day, I'm gonna just go out there and compete. You guys have excelled in tight fourth quarter games last year and again this year. How does that help you in the playoffs where you will come down to the wire usually in the fourth yeah. quarter? Yeah, I mean, it's going to help a lot. You know, all the games are like really, really close. And then, you know, we've been doing a good job, especially watching a lot of film and, and studying those those type of situations. So we'll be ready for that. How excited are you to see your first playoff crowd on Sunday? I'm really excited. I mean, honestly, a couple of days ago, I was watching some some clips from uh, from years ago when Russ and KD and them was there and how the crowd was, was going crazy and all the stuff that was going on outside the arena too. So, you know, I'm really excited. What are some of the advantages that kind of environment can create for you guys? A lot. I mean, it's going to bring a lot of momentum. You know, I mean, we got some great fans and, you know, they really cheer for us. So, you know, every time we score, we make a big play. You know, we we know that they're going to have our backs. What, what made you go back and watch those clips? It's just crazy. You know, I'm excited. I can't wait. You know, it's just the playoff. And, you know, it was it was new for them when, when Russ and them was here. So it was just crazy to see how how the fans was really involved. When, when you close your eyes and envision what, what Sunday might look like, what, what do you see? I mean, I expect to be like it was in those years, really, you know, how they was really cheering for the guys and how loud they were in the arena. Lou, Lou you're, you probably have a decent idea what your assignments will be, no matter who you're playing, but what's it like waiting, not knowing who you're going to play? I mean, are you just kind of chomping to find out, or is it not that hard? Oh. Uh, yeah, I mean, we just we just got to wait. I mean, it is what it is. But at the same time, we play those two teams that we might face a couple times this season. So we we kind of know what to expect. And, you know, we know how they play it. They know how we play. So, you know, it's different to wait until a couple of days before uh, the game. But, uh, you know, we got to live with it.
as you go around town, have you noticed the playoff banners up, kind of building that excitement? Yeah, yeah, I've seen it a little bit, you know, around downtown, seeing the banners and stuff, and, you know, it's, it's huge. I'm, I'm, and I'm really excited for, for the city as well, because, you know, it hasn't, it's been a long time since it's, the playoff has been here. Lou, I don't, I don't know if we've ever heard your version of the story. Like, everybody has a, a story when they first met Mark, when they didn't know him or whatever. Like, what was your first interaction with him like? Like, do you remember? Yeah, I remember. Uh, well, the day that I went undrafted, I flew in the day right after the draft. And, um, you know, he was the first coach out here to welcome me. And we had a workout in, and then that was my first interaction with Coach Mark. What did you think of him back then? It was good. I mean, honestly, as a rookie, everything was just so new to me. You know, he was just the first person that I got it to get on the court with. But, uh, you know, it, just, it was just great the way he introduced himself and, you know, the situation I was in, you know, he was just trying to help me. What's this week been like for you? I mean, I know in past coaching experiences as an assistant go straight from the regular season to the playoffs with a couple of days off, but now you get this whole week off. Yeah. How is it? Has, does the preparation change or anything? Yeah, it does because you don't know. Yeah, we don't know who our, who our opponent is. So, uh, Couple days off, you know, which I thought was valuable for the team because we've had two good days of it, uh, really energetic practices, uh, and we went longer durations than we've gone really since training camp. Um, and then another recovery type day tomorrow. Guys will take what they need, uh, and then we'll be able to jump in on Saturday on an opponent, uh, and then play on Sunday and get the thing rolling. Mark, does, the, does the the preparation for like the coaching battle change? Like, how do you prepare for like? the adjustment to the adjustment from the opposing coaches? Well, you don't know what anything, you don't know what any adjustments are going to be yet. You know, the, the series unfolds kind of in a natural way based on the outcomes of the games and based on what's happening. Um, we try to make sure that we have, you know, all the tools we're going to need heading in and we want all those tools to be as sharp as possible. And that's really what we've been working on all along. You know, the other thing I think that's important is we're not starting from scratch on any of these teams. You know, we have a familiarity with them. They have a familiarity with us. So, um, you know, we're not going in cold. You know, we've played these teams recently. We've played them multiple times over the course of years. So we, we know their personnel. We know their, you know, their tendencies. They know ours. You know, and then we'll, we'll start the series and see what happens. Mark, uh, I won't be presumptive. Like, the way the, the Kings play against the Warriors or the Pelicans play against the Lakers or how they play against each other, Maybe isn't how they play against you. Like, how much of this week is you dissecting your games against those two? How much are you maybe factoring in the games this week? Are, are you factoring those into your prep at all? Yeah, I mean, we're watching them, obviously. Um, I wouldn't say we're over, uh, we're not overemphasizing them. You know, they're just another data point in our understanding of the opponent. Uh, a lot of the week is our, our identity and the things that we need to do independent of who the opponent is. I think that is something that gets lost a little bit. Um, you know, we're not going to be the best team we can be unless we're playing to our stuff. And they're not going to be the best team we can be unless they're playing to theirs. Um, you know, so the, the game plan uh, is a layer, you know, but it's not the foundation. The foundation is, you know, your identity as a team, the way that you want to play every night, you know, irrespective of who your opponent is. And you mentioned not wanting to maybe over-prepare in the case that you had the three six. Like, wh where does that balance lie? now with just the situation you're in now? Yeah, I mean, it's, again, there's no advantage or disadvantage because they're, I mean, they probably have people doing, you know, advanced stuff on us, just like we're doing advanced stuff on them, but their players aren't focused on the Thunder right now. Their players are focused on the game tomorrow night, and our players aren't focused on one individual team right now. And so once we have an opponent, they'll start jumping in on us, we'll jump in on them. We'll both get the same amount of time before the game, and then you know we'll go play the first game. But is, it, is, it, is it possible to over prepare the yeah. two days? That's possible to over prepare. Yeah, it's you only have a hundred percent of your emphasis, you know, and it's always possible to give the team too much and um, you know to really get their legs moving slower because they're thinking. You know, at the end of the day, we got to go out there and compete together uh, and play the way that we've played for eighty-two games and and let the team be that version of itself, you know, and the, the game plan and the preparation needs to be an, an enhancer of that, but not in the way of that. And that's our challenge. Mark, we were talking to Lou earlier about his game seven in the bubble last year, the Pelicans game. What is it about it, about him and his game from your perspective that allows him to step up in these types of moments? Um, I mean, he just, he's a guy that, um, he just rises to the level of a game. You know, that's just how he's been really from day one. It was 
literally from day one, when he first, you know, was with the Thunder, he was a G League player, he was a two-way player, he was playing G League games, and then, you know, you give a guy their first opportunity, and that goes a bunch of different ways. And his first opportunities, his first two weeks here, he was like directly in the fray, and he's always just kind of been like that. Um, his worst moments are, you know, when the level of the game, you know, isn't as high, you know, like when he's at his absolute worst, but he's at his absolute best when the game, when the games get big and when um, the pressure's on, he just, he plays with unbelievable physicality and confidence. How'd you kept the, the, the week of practice? This, these are important games, yep. but you don't want to just overemphasize it, I guess, like, hey, this is, get guys get tensed up or whatever. Mm -hmm. I mean, do you change routine, how you prepare? You prepare like you just any other game, 83, or how do you, how do you handle it? Um, it's a good question. I mean, that's one of the things I think about. I certainly never want to be a reason that the team's overthinking. Um, that's really what it is. You know, you get them overthinking, get them all whacked out on, on small details that really aren't, you know, going to determine the outcome of the game. Um, so, yeah, we just try to stay pretty consistent. You know, we just... Again, I said this yesterday, and I truly believe this. Like, if we have to change a lot of things heading into the playoffs, then we should really be reevaluating how we're doing things in the regular season. You know, because you shouldn't have to have these wholesale changes to things you're doing or the way you're preparing. And if you do, if if the playoffs is bringing something out of you that you're not doing, then next season we have to do a better job in the regular season of establishing those norms. But hopefully, we've done a good job of that. Mark, so, you've had a few tense fourth quarter battles last year if this team has thrived through and again this year how will that help you guys in the playoffs which will probably be tense moments yeah i mean half of the playoff games come down to you know five minutes to go either team can win you know that's factual that last year i think 42 out of 84 games were um you know kind of clutch time games and so you got to be able to execute you know in all quarters you know there's an elevated um feel to every possession in the playoffs but a lot of the games end up being close, and you got to execute on both ends. And uh, we've been in 38 of those situations this year. We've done well in some of them. We've fallen short in others, but we've learned lessons in all of them, and we'll carry those things forward. Josh gave his story uh, about the first time he met you, and you talked about how you, you guys are loving that right now. <laughs> <laughs> talked about how you didn't tell him that you were the head coach. He's not the only one that said that. Why is that something that you don't tell guys when you first meet them? It's kind of like a, it's like, hey, I'm, I'm the head coach, you know, it's like, <laughs> you know, big dog. <laughs> yeah, like, it's kind of a weird introduction, you know, so, uh, and, and anonymity used to be my friend, you know, now the guys, more and more guys, the longer I've done it, then they come in, in the draft process and they at least know who I am. So. Shay, Shay was talking yesterday about how he doesn't really remember it because before you were the head coach, he got shared time together, like he doesn't really remember anything about you like why do you think that is uh when i was an assistant i wasn't like i'm just i'm a i like a i'm a slow burn guy you know i'm not like you know out front on really anything you know i try to relationships get built over time you know and trust gets built over time you can't you can't do that immediately you know if you if you establish if you think you've got that established immediately it's probably doesn't have great integrity to it yet so that year when I was an assistant, I was truly an assistant coach. I wasn't trying to, you know, show anything to anybody. I was just trying to help the team, just like our assistant coaches do a great job of here. So um, I didn't, I wasn't working with him in player development. A lot of my role was with the staff and, and on a team level. It wasn't necessarily with the individual guys. That was, you know, what I was asked to do and what I executed. Listening to anything in particular to get ready for the playoffs? Yeah, it just springs the unit. Just thing, thing, thing. Yeah, keep this the thing. Yeah, especially Mark, this week. Oh, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. Uh, you were talking about adjustments earlier. It seems like there's common discourse of just like too late to adjust, didn't adjust. It seems like with you, you have like great intuition for those adjustments. How have you sort of developed that trait? Um, well, first, a, a general comment on people's opinions of adjustments. Usually, they look at the outcome and then they make a decision over whether or not somebody adjusted or didn't adjust. And I can assure you that all the coaches in the NBA are constantly making a lot of adjustments that are, you know, um, sometimes invisible even to the opponent, you know. And so um, I'd be careful what conclusions anybody draws from that. Um, we just, it's, it's really, it's not adjustments or non-adjustments. It's just like trying to figure out what's best for the team, you know, in a given moment. And sometimes, What's best for the team is just writing something out, you know, and, and just letting it, 
letting it unfold, not adjusting too quickly. Otherwise, you're just blowing in the wind. Uh, but then making a determination if something is not working and there's not a good reason to believe that it's going to work if you stick with it, like being willing to, uh, you know, quickly adapt and try something else. And um, that's, I, I'm, I, I do have an appetite for that um, because I just think it, it, I'd rather be early than late on that stuff uh, because it, it sets an aggressive tone to your own team and to the opponent. Do you buy into the notion, some say playoffs, better players play longer minutes, rotations tighten up or shorten up or whatever, or you buy into that at all? Um, again, it's, you know, the decisions that are best for the team in a given context. You know, I, I'm not a big believer in, like, cutting guys out of a series for no reason. You know, I think that can happen sometimes. Um, but at the same time, you know, it's the end of the season. So some of the pacing that you do in the course of the season is to prepare, you know, it's to basically run the marathon. When you're in the playoffs, you're at the end of the race. And so you've got to, um, you got to sprint, you know, and so sometimes that means longer minutes. Sometimes that means longer rotations. Um, I'm open to that if it's best, uh, but not committed to that either. You know, we'll just, we'll see how it goes. It's a seven game series, you know, so we're going to play at least 11 days worth of a series and that's a long time and so um, we need everybody to be ready and live. Mark, we, we've asked about you know how age might factor into the postseason, how experience might factor into the postseason. In your experience, how much does this general IQ weigh in comparison to those things? Uh, player IQ? Mm -hmm. um, I, I think with experience, um, you just, you gain wisdom, I guess, I would say, you know, like you gain some experiences. If you learn from your experience, it's not a given that you get wisdom from your experiences. Some people just go through their experiences and they're, they don't learn from them, you know, but if you learn from your experiences, you gain wisdom uh, and will gain wisdom from this experience, plain and simple. Um, that doesn't put a cap on what we are capable of right now, but we will be more wise at the end of whatever our playoff run is than we are today. And, you know, we're not afraid to admit that. That's a good thing. I think you said your exact words yesterday were that you just can't handle the background noise that, that comes with the bench. Why, why is that? I just, th I have a hard time focusing through background noise just in general. So um, there, I'm doing a lot of thinking in the game. Um, and it, it's hard for me to think with background noise for whatever reason. Like. I, Dave Bliss is talking right now on the other side, and I'm hearing that right now. I, I can hear his baritone voice just rumbling as he talks to Charlie. Uh, so when I'm over by the bench, you know, there's a lot of conversations, and there should be. You know, our staff is, they're talking about adjustments. They're talking about suggestions. There, there's discourse over there. The players are talking. The players are yelling to the guys on the floor. Um, it just gets in the way of my my thinking so I just I usually am away from the bench unless I have a reason to be over there that's, that's kind of Last one. that's kind of tough to avoid in the NBA though, right? I mean you're, you're in loud arenas you're the arenas I get uh, that stuff doesn't bother me as much it's more like the if, if it's something I I should be listening to so and then sometimes people talk to you when they can have access to you you know what I mean so like if I'm over there they talk to me more um, but I talk to there's so many timeouts you know, I have plenty of, it's not that I'm not talking to anybody, it's just when I'm talking to them. But when I'm in the game, I just try to be observant and uh, focused and, you know, being standing up allows me to do that.